Tetris, the most popular puzzle game in history. From the Electronica 60 to the Nintendo Switch, almost every computer and game console has some version of this legendary game. If you've heard of video games, you've heard of Tetris. But how far can such a simple game be taken? What happens when Tetris is pushed to its limits? Many players have chosen to push modern variants of Tetris to the edge, and with virtually no limiting factors on how fast they can play, the best of them are capable of placing over 7 pieces on the board every second. Other players have opted to push games like the Tetris The Grand Master series to the edge, which features mechanics that are far less permissive in pursuit of the ultimate achievement, Grand Master. But some players have opted to go back to where everything began. When you remove the hold piece, every piece preview besides one, and the ability to slide pieces around on the stack before they lock, the result is NES Tetris. Released in 1989 for the Nintendo Entertainment System, people have been playing and pushing the high scores up for nearly 35 years. This is the story of those few dedicated players, and how they completely changed the game. This is the world record progression of NES Tetris. The game of Tetris likely doesn't need much explanation, but here's a quick rundown. The player drops pieces called Tetraminos into a board 10 columns wide and 20 rows tall. If a row of blocks is fully filled, the row is cleared from the board and everything above drops down to take its place. Clearing more rows at once grants higher scoring, and the most efficient scoring method is the Tetris where 4 rows are cleared at once. Players will usually build up a 9 block wide stack of pieces on the left in order to drop the eyepiece into the right side and score tetrises. This hole on the right is called the well, and it can be built in any column of the board if necessary. Since the tetris is the most efficient way to score points, any clear that is not a tetris is commonly referred to as a burn since you're effectively burning away the scoring potential that those lines had if they were scored as tetrises. The game gives a random distribution of the 7 tetraminos, also known by letter names, T, J, Z, O, S, L, and I. Modern versions of Tetris use the 7-bag randomizer, which guarantees that a player will get one of each of the 7 tetraminos every 7 pieces. NES Tetris does not use the 7-bag randomizer and instead uses a truly random piece generation scheme. This RNG is notoriously malicious and difficult to deal with, and many possible world record runs have been killed because of a bad sequence of pieces generated by the RNG. Like many other Tetris games, the speed the blocks fall in NES Tetris is built around a system of levels. Reaching a certain number of lines will increase the level, and with each passing level comes a speed bump. Well, sort of. You see, since the game can only increase the speed by the number of frames it takes the piece to fall one row, that limits the number of options the developers had for speed changes. After level 9, the levels can be separated into groups by their speed. In levels 10 through 12, pieces fall a row every 5 frames. In levels 13 through 15, pieces fall a row every 4 frames. In levels 16 through 18, pieces fall a row every 3 frames, and in levels 19 through 28, the pieces fall a row every 2 frames. From level 29 onwards, the pieces fall a row every frame. This is the fastest speed present in the game, and it is commonly considered the kill screen for reasons I'll revisit in a moment. Players may select any level from 0 to 19 to start on, with each level generally having more scoring potential before level 29 than the last. The best players use level 18 almost exclusively. 18 has a much lower difficulty than 19, which makes the slight reduction in scoring worth it. Starting from 18 has the effect that the game has two stages, 130 lines of pre-transition on the easier 18 speed, and 100 lines of post-transition on the harder 19 speed. But no matter what level the player starts on, they will have to score nearly all of their points before level 29. From this level onward, since the pieces fall a row every frame, the game is virtually unplayable, both due to the sheer speed of the level, and also due to the fact that it is incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to get pieces to the side due to the delayed auto shifter or DAS, which, when compared to more modern Tetris games with an infinite number of shifts per second and a delay of whatever a player feels comfortable with before those shifts, is very slow at 10 shifts per second with a 266 millisecond delay before those shifts. This means that, best case scenario, it takes around 300 to 500 milliseconds to move a piece from the center of the board to the wall of the board in NES Tetris. 
This very slow dash makes level 19 extremely challenging to play due to a very limited range of movement, and it makes level 29 virtually impossible since the dash can only barely get pieces to the side of the board. For this reason, one of the most notable achievements of NES Tetris is getting past level 29 and reaching level 30. To do this, a player has to clear 10 lines at the speed of level 29, a feat thought so far out of the question that the level numbers run out at 29. The other notable achievement in NES Tetris is the max out. If you look at the score counter for NES Tetris, you will notice how it only has 6 digits. Since it does not roll over, the maximum possible score is 999,999, the number represented by 6 nines. When the score reaches this number, the player has maxed out the game. The story of NES Tetris World Records begins in 2009. At this point, even though NES Tetris is well past its heyday, a few people, most of whom have been playing the game ever since it came out, are still secretly playing it. Some members of this little community are connected with each other through forums, and some only play by themselves, not knowing others are doing the same. A site called Twin Galaxies is the way that most of these people keep track of everyone else's scores. Going back to our two notable achievements, the Max Out and Level 30, several people had claimed them at this point, but none had acceptable proof. Thor Ackerland, the winner of the 1990 Nintendo World Championships, had claimed to max the game out and reach Level 30 in 1990, but he had no proof, not even images, and as such, these were merely claims. A Nintendo Power issue from 1992 showed a player named Scott Anderson from Windsor, Ontario having a max out, so presumably a picture or VHS tape of this score must have existed at some point, but no one in the community had ever seen it. And a player named JW Tetris on the forums of the time had claimed to max the game out in 1996 with the recording on a lost VHS tape. Since no one else had been able to get either a max out or a level 30 on video since, some questioned if these accomplishments were even possible. A player would have to fit so much perfection into the space of just 230 lines before the kill screen, they said. It was infeasible, they said. But on April 19th, 2009, it happened. Harry Hong achieved the very first max out to be verified by Twin Galaxies. However, Harry wasn't the first. Jonas Neubauer had two max outs on video before Harry Hong got his on video, but neither were of acceptable quality for Twin Galaxies. The first was a level 18 max out without game audio posted in 2005, and the second was a level 19 max out recorded on a flip phone posted in 2008. The latter may very well be the first recorded level 19 max out in the history of NES Tetris. However, the extremely low quality and lack of game audio made it seem almost like Bigfoot footage, so it's not hard to understand why this wasn't sufficient proof. However, with the knowledge we have today, we can reasonably conclude that both of these games were legitimate. Not too long after Harry's video, Thor Ackerlin also posted footage of a max out achieved starting on 19 and ending with a level 30. It's unfortunately not possible to prove Thor ever maxed out in 1990, but his incredible skill in 2011 makes a compelling argument that he did. At this point, however, we reach a period of uncertainty. Since the score counter in NES Tetris stops at 999,999, the world record progression of NES Tetris is extraordinarily hard to track across the early years. Rather than going through the process of hand calculating scores past the max out, most players simply track the number of lines they took to max out. That was until March 21st, 2015, when Joshua Tolles created the game genie code NUGES. This game genie code uncaps the score counter of NES Tetris, allowing players to tally their scores past max out easily. The way it works is that the leading digit of the score becomes a hexadecimal letter. So A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, etc. The highest score that I was able to find prior to the introduction of this game genie code is this score by Ben Mullen, uploaded on December 22nd, 2013. However, since most players at the time were playing for early max outs and likely did not care for their overall score, it is possible that someone may have scored higher in the past. For example, in this game played by Matt Bucco in 2012, he maxes out midway through level 26 before the video cuts out, and this is the last frame. Unfortunately, we may never know what the final score was despite the full video presumably existing on Bucco's hard drive, since he hasn't returned home for 10 years. 
However, Buko could have theoretically gotten a score much higher than Ben Mullen's game, which almost didn't even get to level 29 after a series of misdrops, but fortunately Ben eventually got the line piece to finish out the game with 1,071,121 points. The first recorded 1.1 and 1.15 million scores were achieved by Harry Hong in April of 2015, a month after Enyugas was introduced. But considering the potential that Buko's game held all the way back in 2012, it is likely that these were not the first 1.1 million scores or even the highest. However, the next milestone, 1.2 million, would prove to be much harder to accomplish. We return back to Harry Hong, nearly two years later. Since his two recorded 1.1 million scores on his YouTube channel, Harry has started streaming his games live on Twitch. In this stream, he is going for 1.2, as evidenced by the pace chart at the top left. Compared to a 1.1 million, a score of 1.2 million is incredibly difficult because there is far less margin of error for a player to mess up than if they were to score a 1.1. It is necessary to score up to 100,000 more points than a 1.1 score during the exact same space of 230 lines. 100,000 points is around 3 or 4 tetrises. That might not sound like a lot, but that means that a player has 12 to 16 less lines to burn. And burn lines add up fast. Just a single misdrop can easily force a player to burn 6 to 8 lines. To score a 1.2, a player must play even closer to perfection. Pace is real. Harry smashes his pace goal of 600 to 650,000 at the 130 line transition with a score of 696,000. Harry maxes out in level 25, breaking the highest score he expected he needed for a 1.2. Harry scores 1.1 midway through level 27. With a double on level 29, Harry Hong achieves the first ever 1.2 million score in NES Tetris, claiming the world record. After the 1.2 million barrier was broken in NES Tetris, the only thing left was to become the second one to break it. Jonas Neubauer needs no introduction. He possibly achieved the very first max out, and the first one recorded on video, and has won every classic Tetris World Championships event at this point except in 2014, when he lost to Harry Hong. Needless to say, he's one of the best players in the world. Right now, Jonas is playing a casual game, or so he thinks. Jonas transitions at 666,000 points. At this point, in order to break the 1.2 million barrier, he needs around 533,000 points after level 19. Jonas hits 205 lines 17 points shy of a max up. He has 4 lines available to burn for 1.2 and takes 2 of them already. Jonas goes into level 28 with one line left to burn for a 1.2, and takes it.
Jonas gets a 1.2 million score of his own, and he doesn't even know it at the moment. As far as he knows, it's just a casual game. I max out midway through level 26, and some play afterwards. And it's at this point that it sets in that 1.2 million is perfectly achievable for high level players. Around a year later, Jonas Neubauer is once again playing some casual games of Tetris on stream. Over the past year, Jonas has proven his skill by streaming much more than just high score attempts. He streamed Tetris speedruns, analyzed both his own games and games from his subscribers on Twitch, and has even commentated himself while playing. And that's just what I've been able to find in his Twitch highlights. From this, Jonas has shown that he's capable of another score above 1.2 million, and the only thing he needs for that to happen is a good sequence of pieces from the RNG. Jonas transitions at 675,000 points. With a score like this, he will need around 536,000 points to beat his previous world record of approximately 1.21 million points. Jonas maxes out into level 26 at approximately 199 lines. This is about one and a half Tetris is ahead of the pace he had in his previous world record. Let's go! Woo! Unfortunately, at the beginning of level 28, Jonas created a very bumpy stack, which forced him to create a hole, and this forced him to burn later on, sacrificing one of his Tetris opportunities. Nevertheless, this game was an incredibly strong showing from Jonas, and helped prove that he was still on top after his victory at the 2017 Classic Tetris World Championships. This next score, also by Jonas Neubauer, is quite significant for a reason that I will mention later. This record was set during a casual stream of his, just like his last world record. Jonas transitions at 677,000. With a score like this, he will need around 553,000 points after the level 19 transition to beat his previous record. Jonas maxes out into level 25 at 190 lines, one of the earliest recorded max outs in history. Jonas scores 1.1 million into level 27, and at this point, he only needs 4 Tetrises or so to break his previous world record. Let's go! Get out of my face! Oh my gosh, that pace! Jonas breaks his previous world record with a Tetris into level 29 and a double on the kill screen, coming incredibly close to 1.25 million. Up until now, every score world record, including Jonas's 1.245 million, has been set with the DAS playstyle. I explained this earlier in the video, but if you missed it, Basically, it's playing by holding down the directional buttons and letting the game's built-in delayed auto shift remove the piece for you. But there is another option, and it would prove so superior to DAS that a DAS player would never hold the score world record ever again. That option is just not using the DAS at all. If you can tap faster than 10 times per second, you can move the pieces around faster than the game's built-in DAS, and this technique is called hyper tapping. Koji Nishio, or Corion, is a player who may need a small introduction. 
His first experiences with Tetris were with Sega Tetris, and later Tetris the Grandmaster, the prominent versions of Tetris in Japan. That being said, he isn't a new player to the NES Tetris community, with his competition premiere being in CTWC 2016, where he made it to the top 4, losing against Jonas. He is also one of three known hypertappers in the community at this point, with the other two being Thor Ackerlin and a mysterious figure on YouTube known as Spectre or Dan Z. This game was played during one of his practice streams, where he was trying to improve and maybe beat his personal best of 1.202 million points. Corian transitions at 674,000 points, well on pace for a score above 1.2 million. Corian maxes out into level 26 at around 199 lines. Although this is worse than Jonas's previous score, where he maxed out into level 25 at 190 lines, one of the main advantages of hypertapping is that a player can maneuver pieces into places where they otherwise wouldn't be able to fit, effectively giving a hypertapper like Corian more options on where he can place his pieces than someone like Jonas, allowing him to usually score higher with the same RNG. Corian goes into level 28 with 1.15 million and no lines left to burn. At this point, he needs to play perfectly to get the world record. One... Freeze! Freeze, come on! Yes! Woo! Yes! Yes! With a Tetris into level 29, Corian breaks the 1.25 million barrier and takes one of the most contested world records in NES Tetris from Jonas Neubauer. This score marks the beginning of the reign of Hyper Tappers. But up until this point, the speed of level 29 has remained a kill screen with only three people known to have reached level 30. Thor Ackerland, Yanni Herlevi, and Corian. Of these people, Thor and Corian are Hyper Tappers. Like I said before, one of the main advantages of hypertapping is that players have much more maneuverability over their pieces. This is going to get slightly technical, so stay with me here. In the beginning of the video, I said that with DAS, it would take between 300 to 500 milliseconds to get a piece from the center of the board to the side of the screen. Well, it only takes 300 milliseconds for a piece to fall to the very bottom of the stack in level 29, and this is why it is only barely possible to survive on level 29 with DAS. However, with hypertapping, the time to get a piece from the center of the screen to the side of the board is reduced to approximately 200 to 400 milliseconds, depending on how much faster than DAS a player can tap the controller, and this gives just enough wiggle room to the best hypertappers to play at the bottom of the stack on level 29. Up until this point, playing to a level past 30 had been considered impossible, but that was all about to change. In 2018, a new generation of teen players is beginning to form. Some of them are DAS players and some of them are hyper tappers. Joseph Saley is one of the latter. He has already gotten 43 max outs and 20 level 30s, as can be seen by his counters in the bottom right, and in this stream he is going for level 31. Most of these teens have gotten into NES Tetris after seeing CTWC content and or the Boom Tetris for Jeff meme video on YouTube. Boom, Jeff. Tetris for Jeff. Boom, Tetris for Jeff. To get to level 31, a player needs to clear 20 lines within the kill screen, a feat that used to be impossible. With hypertapping, however, it is possible to place pieces all the way on the left side of the board, but this is only possible with a low stack, which is why Joseph is trying to keep the stack low into 29. Whoa! Yes! Whoa! Oh my god! Yes! 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 Joseph reaches 311 lines, which is both the first level 31 in recorded history and the lines world record in NES Tetris. This milestone is much more than it appears to be at the surface. It proved that it was feasible for a human to play and score points within level 29, and it was one of the first steps on the path to hyper-tapper dominance. 
For the next two years, Joseph held the Lion's World record. He reached level 32 less than a month afterwards, level 33 four months after 32, level 34 exactly a year after 33, and level 35 four months after 34, before being outdone by Eric ICX, who reached level 37 and 38 in rapid succession five months later. The Lion's World record has changed hands quite a bit since then, but from this point onward, we will be focusing solely on scoreboard records, and Eric ICX will be referring to himself in the third person. Comment below if you'd like to see him do a world record progression on the Lion's World record. Around 9 months after his previous world record score, Corian is once again streaming a Tetris practice session. Here, he is attempting to beat his previous record, as can be seen by his goal text in the bottom left. He's been streaming for around an hour and a half at the start of this game. Corian transitions at 641,000 points. At this point, beating his record is doable, but it will be very difficult, as it will require over 600,000 points to be scored within level 19. Corian maxes out at 200 lines. At this point, he needs 8 Tetrises to beat his previous world record. He only has one burn left. With a Tetris into level 29, Corian finally did it after 9 months. He updated his score world record on NES Tetris, and it seemed this was where it would stay for a long time. However, only 3 months later, and seemingly out of nowhere... Nineteen seventy five Tyler P is a mysterious figure in the Tetris community. He is a new player who just sprung up into the scene very recently without much backstory, but he's already a high level player who has scored one point two million. He's already gotten a one point one million in this stream alone, and is going for three max outs and a level thirty in this stream. Tyler transitions at 679,000 points, narrowly missing out on a 700,000 transition. Tyler maxes out in level 24, the second earliest recorded max out in history. This game has potential for far more than just a 1.2 at this point. Tyler scores 1.1 midway through level 26, leaving him lots of headroom to not only break the world record, but also get something much greater than the world record.
Tyler finishes the game with 1.298 million points, less than 2,000 away from 1.3 million. 1.3 was well within his grasp, but he missed the double with the T piece going into level 29, killing his chance. Tyler's game sent shockwaves throughout the Tetris community. From it, everyone knew that 1.3 was very possible, and not only was it possible, but it could happen at any time. But a question still lingered in many people's minds, who was Tyler? Unfortunately, this question may never be firmly answered, but this is the best summarized answer I can give based on the limited information I have. 1975 Tyler P was originally an account that three people had access to, Joseph, Cheese, and E-flat-7, who I'll refer to as Ella. Each one of these people could quote-unquote disprove that Tyler was any of the others. All three of them took turns streaming on the account, but although most of Tyler's VODs have been lost to time, there are some VODs that still exist, such as this one from when Tyler played in the Tetris Deathmatch event against Joseph. Without going into too much technical detail, these vertical lines that are visible on the capture are something that only Cheese and Joseph have on their capture, and it's due to a combination of the capture card itself and dirty power. As Joseph was playing at the time on his own Twitch channel, it's likely that Cheese was the person who streamed this VOD, and the lower frame rate in comparison to other VODs is another characteristic sign of Cheese's streams, even today. This seems to explain most cases where Joseph, Cheese, and Ella quote-unquote proved that they own the 1975 Tyler P Twitch account. I did see one of these unfold live when Ella streamed on the 1975 Tyler P Twitch account and did various things that people in Discord asked her to do on stream. Unfortunately, both this VOD and the Discord messages have been lost to time, so as painful as it may be for me to say this, you'll just have to trust me on this one. In late 2020, Joseph did post a message where he said he was the one who streamed Tyler's 1.298 game. While this isn't conclusive in any means, and Joseph didn't provide any additional proof, I do personally believe that the heavy circumstantial evidence I mentioned before, both about the vertical lines on the capture and the fact that what I believe to be Cheese's stream was at a much lower frame rate, supports the case that the 1.298 was in fact played by Joseph, and this is what most of the community also believes. And while we may never truly know with 100% certainty who played Tyler's game, it sparked an unofficial race for 1.3 million. Both Harry and Corian had near misses, with Harry coming one Tetris short of a 1.3 million due to some lines that he burned at the beginning of level 26, and Corian being barely on pace at the beginning of level 28 before a bad sequence of pieces destroyed his board, causing him to top out before level 29. But rather fittingly in the end,
Yes! Yes! Oh my god! Yes. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! No! Hey! Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, what happened? What happened? Oh my god! Oh Jesus Christ! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, I'm so, I'm shaking so hard right now! Oh! Oh my goodness! Joseph Saley scores the first ever 1.3 million and even gets a Tetris in level 29, setting a new world record, and getting over 1.35 million points, making people immediately wonder about the possibility of 1.4 million. This is a special day for two reasons. One, Joseph broke the score world record, and two, Joseph broke it again in under an hour. Joseph's first game was on a 19 start, with 632,000 points at 130 lines, a max out in level 25, a 1.1 into level 27, a 1.2 into level 28, and a 1.3 into kill screen along with an extra 67,000 points scored, topping out at 1.375 million points. And Joseph's second game had the potential to be a lot more than it was. Joseph had 716,000 points at 130 lines. Joseph maxes out midway through level 24. It's not good. It is not fine. Oh my god! World record though! <laughs> Dude! With a sequence of unfavorable pieces, however, Joseph is denied the opportunity for a 1.4 million score. On June 14th of 2020, a screenshot was posted in the CTM Discord of a game by Joseph which shows 1,439,173 points. Allegedly, the reason this game wasn't recorded was because Joseph stopped recording after getting 1.384 million, the level 18 start world record at the time, and forgot to start recording again. However, the game was streamed live to a Discord call. A player by the name of Miles was in the call and recorded audio from his headset microphone. You can just barely hear the other people in the call at some points of the audio, such as when Joseph completes a dig to get 1.4. You're so cracked! How did you do that? Oh my god. <laughs> You can also hear Joseph's reaction when he sees that he wasn't recording. Are you kidding? So did Joseph actually get 1.4? While we have no way of knowing for sure, the majority of the community trusts him on it. Around half a month after Joseph's score, a player by the name of Scott Obozo played out a perfect game of NES Tetris using RNG manipulation, getting 1.5 million into level 29. Without going into too much detail, the process for this is finding a starting point that is possible for a human to hit consistently, and memorizing the optimal placements to make. This works because the randomizer of NES Tetris only resets when the console is power cycled, which means that the same inputs on the menu will always give the same position within the seed. The community's almost universal response to this run was to make it a separate category from ones where the player doesn't know what pieces they will get, also known as random seed runs. But a recorded 1.4 million without RNG manipulation would prove to be extremely elusive, and in the end, it would require people to completely rethink how NES Tetris is played. This game was played 4 months after Joseph's unrecorded 1.4 by Dog playing Tetris, a player rapidly rising to the top of the ranks in NES Tetris. Dog transitioned at 717,000.
Dog maxed out at the beginning of level 24. Dog entered level 28 with a score of 1.295 million. He needs at least a Tetris on the kill screen to get a 1.4 at this point. Unfortunately, Dog wasn't able to close it out, coming 14,000 points shy of a 1.4 million. But something even greater was on the horizon. So, do you remember how I said that a recorded 1.4 million would require people to rethink how NES Tetris is played? Well, around this time in late 2020, several players were experimenting with techniques to get even faster movement speeds on an NES controller. One of them, a player named Cheese, was inspired by a video by Hector Fly, where he showcased a technique to get extremely fast button mashing in track and field, which involved rolling his fingers over an arcade button. But trying to move this technique over to an NES controller presents a big problem. The D-pad on an NES controller is much smaller than an arcade button. Everyone else's grip tried to work around this limitation by using the D-pad as the tapping surface in some way, but Cheese had an idea. What if, instead of rolling his fingers on the surface of the D-pad itself, he tried to roll them on the back of the controller pushing the D-pad into a finger he had on top? And that simple idea became rolling. The reason rolling was, and still is, so revolutionary is because it removed nearly all of the limitations on mobility that the DAS and hypertapping playstyles had. Going back to the comparison I made earlier in the video, hypertapping takes 200 to 400 milliseconds to move a piece from the center of the board to the side of the screen, but with rolling, it takes the player only 100 to 250 milliseconds to move a piece from the center of the board to the side of the screen. But with great power comes great potential for error. It doesn't matter if you can move the pieces faster than ever intended if you can't move them where you want them to go. It took top players months before they were even remotely consistent at this revolutionary playstyle, as only one poorly timed error can be a fatal mistake. But Cheese had a little bit of a head start over everyone else. On June 30th, 2021, Cheese started his qualifier for the July 2021 Classic Tetris Monthly Tournament. During this hour-long qualifier, the goal is to get two good scores, which will then be averaged out into your final qualifying score. As this is Cheese's first game of the hour, he's looking to get a high score to start his qualifier on a good note. Cheese transitions at 593,000. Compared to previous world record games, this is rather low. If he wants any chance at getting the world record, he'll have to ramp up the aggression in level 19. Cheese maxes out into level 26 at approximately 200 lines.
Chi scores 1.1 at the end of level 27. The maximum score he can achieve before 29 is around 1.2 million, but that Z misdrop is going to cost him a few Tetris opportunities, reducing his runway even further. Cheese goes into level 29 with 1.158 million points, but even with a score this low, Cheese has the potential to score like no one else can on level 29. Unfortunately, with a series of unfortunate misdrops, Cheese tops out in level 37 with a score of 1,461,740 points. It took over a year, and also the invention of an entirely new playstyle, but Cheese had finally done it. He had gotten a 1.4 million score on video. This game was arguably the first game that showed the true potential of rolling to everyone in the community. His ability to score 3 Tetrises on level 29 back to back to back in order to get 1.4 was something that even the best hyper tappers could only dream of, and the left well Tetris that she's achieved on level 32 to get out of a seemingly impossible situation required possibly even more skill than that. A little bit of context here, Cheese had 233 milliseconds in order to get the line piece to the left here, and if he rolled his fingers perfectly, he would have had to do 20 inputs per second minimum. In reality, it was probably more like 23 inputs per second, as shown by the classic Tetris bot here. Since the best hyper tappers at the time peaked at 18 inputs per second, the movement speed that Cheese commanded with the rolling playstyle was truly unprecedented. And with this score, and other demonstrations from Cheese on level 29 starts, other players were sure to take notice of this new playstyle's true potential. Hydrant Dude is a player who has been around in the community for quite some time. Despite not being the fastest tapper or the best stacker, he has made himself quite known for other contributions to the community such as ROM hacks. Before Cheese's demonstrations of the potential of the rolling playstyle, he was a fairly accomplished tapper, having a personal best of 1.23 million points with tapping, achieved in January of 2021. For the past few months, Hydrant has also been practicing the rolling playstyle, and in this session, he's trying to beat his old level 19 personal best. Hydrant reaches 130 lines at 507,000 points. Hydrant maxes out midway through level 27. Hydrant goes into level 29 with 1.124 million points. Although this is lower than just about any other recent world record, Cheese's game showed how much it was possible to score within the kill screen, and Hydrant entered with a very low stack. Hydrant reaches 1.2 million with a single in level 34. Hydrant reaches 1.3 million with a Tetris in level 38 and immediately comes very close to topping out. Hydrant achieves 1.4 million with a Tetris in level 41. 
At this point, the world record is only 50,000 points away. All he has to do is survive. Hydrant beats Cheese's score immediately after making a very bad misdrop on level 44, and makes a game-ending misdrop immediately afterwards. Hydrant's final score is 1,464,960 points, beating the previous record by 3,220 points. This game, along with Cheese's previous record, nicely demonstrates the two basic approaches that different players have taken when it comes to utilizing the extra mobility that the rolling playstyle provides. On one hand, you have players like Cheese who prefer to play more aggressive and score points very quickly, but with the caveat that just about any mistake is game-ending, as any misdrop at these heights is likely fatal. Cheese showed in his game the sheer scoring potential of Tetrises in level 29, but in order to get them, he had to ascend to stack heights that required him to play nearly perfectly or face certain death. And on the other hand, you have players like Hydrant, who prefer to play safer and score points slowly, but this allows them to have more tolerance to misdrops or mistakes they would make. Hydrant showed in his game that even though he played low in the field normally, when a combination of mistakes and bad RNG forced him to play slightly higher, he was able to dig out of the mess and get back down to the bottom of the screen. Hydrant's game came three lines short of the line's world record at the time, which was set just one day back by another roller named Jounce at 286 lines. And fittingly, just three days later, Jounce is a new roller who, before this game, was rapidly rising up through the ranks. Around four months before this match, he had posted his first ever video where he used rolling, which was clearing 19-4, and from there, he went on to get multiple other world records, such as the level 29 start lines and score world records, and the overall line world record. This game was played during one of Jounce's first Classic Tetris monthly matches against Odin Low G06. Jounce transitions at 695,000 points, nearly a 700k transition, and nearly 300,000 points ahead of his opponent Odin. Odin tops out at 502,000 points, nowhere near Jounce's current score of over 900,000 in level 23. Since this had the potential to be an incredible score into level 29, Jounce decided to keep playing. Jounce maxes out into level 24, an incredible pace for any game, much less one played live against someone else. Jounce scores 1.1 million at the end of level 25. Jounce scores 1.2 midway through level 27. He has the potential to get 4 more Tetrises before level 29. Jounce goes into level 29 with 1.352 million points. To beat Hydrant's world record, he will need 112,000 points in level 29. Jounce scores 1.4 million with a double into level 32, just another 60,000 points left. Going into level 35, Jounce is set up for a Tetris, gets the bar, and breaks the world record in style with 1.486 million points. 1.5 million isn't far away, but first he'll have to deal with these holes. With a double in level 36, Jounce achieves the first ever 1.5 million score, and he's not done yet. Going into level 39, Jounce is set up for another Tetris, gets the bar immediately, and now he's nearly at 1.6 million points! And with a single on level 39, Jounce gets the first ever 1.6 million score. His board is messy, but he's not finished yet. With those two misdrops to the left on level 41, Jounce finally tops out at 1.627 million points. 
deleting digit of the score shows zero here because the Game Genie code that uncaps the score makes the leading digit count in hexadecimal, which only counts up to F, or 15. So anything beyond that rolls back to zero. For this reason, a score of 1600,000 points, better known as 1.6 million points, is known as a rollover. It's hard to overstate just how significant this score was in the community. Two things immediately jump out from the start. Firstly, it beat the previous world record by over 100,000 points, which at the time was the biggest score world record jump in the history of NES Tetris. And secondly, breaking the 1.6 million barrier was thought to be impossible just a little while ago, and to be fair, with DAS and hypertapping, it nearly was. These two factors, along with the fact that the score was done live in a match, instantly made it one of the most memorable score world records ever. But one question still lingered. Who was Jones? Well, we wouldn't have to wait long to find out. It was Hydrant Dude. He just admitted it. Well, not exactly, I guess. At the 2021 Blank Garage Qualifier, which I will be doing a vlog about sometime, a game scout took some video footage of Hydrant Dude rolling, and when comparing the hand cams of Hydrant and Jounce, they looked remarkably similar, which led to Hydrant admitting that he was Jounce all along. Nevertheless, the score was still legitimate, and it's a record that's got a heck of a story. Huffleupagus, similar to Hydrant Dude, is a former hypertapper that transitioned to rolling. He got third place in the 2020 Classic Tetris World Championships, losing to Dog Playing Tetris, who would eventually end up winning the entire tournament. Before switching to rolling, he had a PB of 1.32 million points with tapping, which is pretty good. During this session, he was attempting to beat his level 19 PB at the time of 1.339 million points. Huff reaches 130 lines at 667,000 points. Huff maxes out in level 26 at approximately 205 lines. Huff goes into level 29 and immediately gets a Tetris for 1.2 million points. Huff scores 1.3 million at level 33. Huff scores 1.4 million at level 39. Huff scores 1.5 million with a double on level 44. Huff becomes the second person to break the 1.6 million barrier and rolls over the score with a single into level 49. The world record is less than 100,000 points away now. With a double into level 50, Huff breaks Hydrant's old record. After a valiant effort that was unfortunately ended by a missed roll, Huff topped out at level 52 with a score of 1,676,400 points. This game was also the Lions world record at the time, and it's not hard to see why. Going back to our two distinct playstyles from earlier, aggressive and safe, Huff is an incredibly safe player. On level 29, after two Tetrises, he took nearly no risks, and when a bad situation forced his stack to get higher, he managed to survive for quite a while until he unfortunately made a game-ending misdrop. But Huff's record wouldn't stand for long. On November 29th, Cheese once again was playing out an hour-long Classic Tetris monthly qualifier. His two best games at the time were a 1.1 million and a 1.0 million, which would have gotten into the Masters event bracket, which the top 16 qualifying players participate in, 
but it would have been a relatively low seed in the bracket, so Cheese was still looking for a higher score to complement his 1.1 million. Cheese transitions to level 19 at 639,000 points. Cheese maxes out into level 28. Cheese goes into level 29 with 1.078 million points. On level 40, Cheese misses a teaspoon which causes him to make a series of deadly misdrops. But not long after, after breaking the 1.3 million barrier on level 43, he's stuck in another tough situation and nearly dies after missing a square to the right. But he still manages to survive and he has a Tetris well set up. Cheese scores 1.4 million at level 45. With a Tetris on level 47, Cheese scores 1.5 million. Cheese rolls the score over with a Tetris on level 48. With a Tetris on level 50, Cheese breaks Huff's world record and achieves the first ever 1.7 million score. Almost immediately after another Tetris, Cheese achieves the first ever 1.8 million. With a Tetris on level 56, Cheese achieves the first ever 2 million score. Unfortunately, with a series of misdrops on the left, Cheese tops out, but not before achieving an unprecedented score of 2,340,240 points. Once again, it's hard to overstate just how crazy of a game this was. When it was achieved, people could barely believe their eyes. Just around two weeks ago, Huff had gotten 1.6 million points, and people expected the world record to increase in increments of 100,000, maybe 200,000 points. No one expected Cheese to break Huff's world record by nearly 700,000 points. Cheese's insanely aggressive stacking and the Tetrises he scored in the very late levels of the game where Tetrises are worth much more helped him break Huff's old record by such a huge margin. And Cheese's record would stand for nearly five months until one fateful day in April. April 1st, 2022 is a special day for multiple reasons beyond just being April Fool's Day. Early in the morning hours of the day, Cheese was playing out his qualifier for the April 2022 Classic Tetris Monthly Tournament, having started in the late hours of March 31st. He was 33 minutes into the qualifier at the time, and he had two scores on the board, a 1.27 million and a 1.1 million. This was enough to get him in, but there was no reason to not try for a higher score in order to get a higher seed, so that's what Cheese did. Cheese transitions at 640,000 points. Cheese maxes out into level 28. Cheese goes into level 29 and immediately gets a Tetris to go up to 1.05 million points.
Cheese rolls the score over with a double on level 45. Cheese reaches 2 million with a Tetris into level 53. Cheese gets 2.3 million at level 62. His world record is less than 100,000 away at this point. Cheese breaks his previous world record with a single on level 63, but immediately after he goes for an aggressive Tetris and makes a game-bending misdrop. Cheese tops out at 2,340,637 points, beating his previous world record by only 397 points. For some context, that's less points than a single on level 9. The huge improbability of this small of a record improvement is impressive in and of itself. But on that very same day, the record would be broken again, with arguably an even more improbable game. Eric ICX is the player who, if you know the YouTube channel you're currently watching, likely doesn't need an introduction, but I'll do my best here. Eric was a player who started playing midway through 2018 and after getting a console in 2019, quickly rose to the top of the ranks in NES Tetris, being one of the fastest tappers the game had ever seen. His incredibly fast tapping allowed him to take the level world record and the 29 lines world record from Joseph Saley in 2020, achieving level 38 and 112 lines in 29 respectively. When rolling hit the scene in early 2021, Eric was quick to adapt training for months and breaking his level 29 lines PB on September 8th of 2021 and achieving level 45 on November 4th of 2021, which was the world record at the time. His PB before this game was 1.497 million points, a score that he had achieved just a day before in his Classic Tetris Monthly Qualifier. Before this game, he had just gotten a 1.3 million game and was going for back-to-back 1.3 scores. Eric transitions at 638,000 points. Eric maxes out into level 25. Eric scores 1.2 million points at level 28. Eric goes into level 29 and immediately gets a 1.3 million score with the Tetris in level 29. Eric beats his PB of 1.497 million with a Tetris in level 40, getting his first ever 1.5 million. Eric scores his first 1.6 million in level 43 with a single. Eric breaks the 2 million barrier, becoming the second person to do so after Cheese. Eric gets 2.3 million points into level 65, and at this point, the world record is only 30,000 points away. Eric sets a new world record with a double into level 66. He's been playing for 37 levels of kill screen, and he's not showing signs of letting up anytime soon. After an agonizing dig, Eric breaks the 2.6 million barrier and gets the first ever quote-unquote double max out. In the middle of another agonizing dig, Eric becomes the first person to score 3 million points in NES Tetris. With a double into level 87, Eric becomes the first ever player to roll over the score counter in NES Tetris twice, which is a truly monumental achievement.
After a couple of mistakes and an unsuccessful dig, Eric finally topped out with a final score of 3,772,380 points. This score sent shockwaves throughout the Tetris community. When he posted it to Discord, it was incredibly hard to believe at first. The fact that he had only posted a screenshot, combined with the unfortunate coincidence of it being April 1st, led people to dismiss it as an April Fool's joke. That was, until he finally uploaded a video to Discord, allowing people to see the game with their own eyes. With this being a score jump over the world record that nearly equated to Eric's PB before this game, obviously people had questions. For starters, when Eric went into level 64, his camera shut off. There is actually a fairly simple explanation for this though. The Nikon DSLR Eric was using has a time limit of 30 minutes when outputting video via HDMI, and since he hadn't bothered to reset the timer after his previous 1.3 million game, the timer expired and the camera's feed shut off. If you look up here, you can see some parts of the 30 second warning. And there was also the question of both how and why Eric had been able to pull off such a huge world record increase, and the answer basically comes down to a concept called scaling, which I'll try to explain. The scoring system of NES Tetris basically works like this. When you score a line clear, the game gives you points decided by these four formulas for the four types of line clears. For simplicity's sake, let's focus on the Tetris formula. Using this formula, we can find that when a Tetris is scored on level 9, it's worth 12,000 points, and when a Tetris is scored on level 19, it's worth 24,000 points. So essentially, if we double the level plus 1 value here in this formula, we get double the score given for a Tetris. Going back to our aggressive and safe playstyles from earlier, this is another advantage that playing safe has. By surviving longer, you'll reach levels where line clears are worth much more than they are in the earlier levels of the game. At level 29, Tetrises are worth 36,000 points, but the Tetris that Eric scored at level 93 is worth 112,800 points. So at level 29, you need a bit more than 3 Tetrises to match the scoring potential of just one Tetris in the late game. And once you look at how much longer people have survived as the world record has gone up, it starts to make sense why the jumps are so much bigger. Huff survived to level 52 in his 1.676 million game, Cheese survived to level 61 as a much more aggressive player than Huff in his 2.34 million game, and Eric survived all the way to level 95, having broken Cheese's world record at level 66. So basically, by surviving longer, Eric reached levels of the game that give many more points for the same line clears as earlier levels and the next world record would put the concept of scaling to the ultimate test. Four and a half months later, Eric and Huff are playing in a CTM match. After Eric transitions at 546,000 points and goes into level 29 with an incredibly scary board that he somehow immediately gets out of, both players are off. In the middle of a precarious dig, Eric rolls the score over for the first time this game, and yet, Huff is still over 100,000 points ahead. Eric has a long ways to go, both to the world record and to beat Huff's score if he tops out. Huff tops out. Eric beats Huff's score. Having beaten Huff's score around 125 lines ago, Eric gets a double max out with a Tetris on level 83. Eric scores 3 million points. With a single on level 94, Eric gets the second ever double rollover. With a single at level 105, Eric sets a new world record, and he's not showing any signs of stopping. Eric scores 4 million points.
Eric gets his third rollover of the game on level 123. The colors of NES Tetris will glitch out when he reaches 1,320 lines, and that's less than 150 lines away. Eric scores 5 million points. With a single, Eric reaches the glitch colors at level 138. Eric scores 6 million points. Finally, after achieving 4 score rollovers, level 146, and playing so far he glitched out the colors, Eric tops out at 6,492,500 points due to not being able to see his board. If you'd like to know why exactly the colors glitched out like they did in this game, there's a video in the description which explains why this happens very well, but basically the way the game checks what color to use for the pieces breaks down because the game developers never expected anyone to get that far. Before this game, the closest that anyone had ever gotten to glitch colors was 976 lines, and although it very much was unexpected to go straight from 976 lines to 1,408 lines, it wasn't implausible considering the increasing jumps of Eric and Cheese's previous world records. That being said, the fact that this score happened during a live match, with hundreds being able to watch and react to the game live on Twitch, and the fact that it was an increase of 2.7 million points over Eric's previous world record score immediately made this one of the most memorable world records in NES Tetris history. So, what does the future of NES Tetris World Records hold? Well, when it comes to high scores, the only limiting factor is how much stamina a player has to keep going. In the previous version of this world record progression, I made the prediction that world records would have a significant amount of their points achieved on the kill screen. With hypertapping, players could only achieve a couple thousand points on average. But with the advent of rolling, there are practically no limits to how many points a player can score, and this has effectively transformed NES Tetris into a marathon game. That being said, high score isn't the only world record worth looking at in NES Tetris. More efficiency-based world records, like the earliest max out, earliest rollover, and highest score in a competition game, are highly contested records today even with the rolling playstyle in full swing. As I see it, there are two big milestones left for players to achieve when it comes to endurance. Game crash, and getting to level 255. Game Crash occurs with an unmodified version of the game if you clear a single at 1,489 lines, which humans are currently very close to achieving. But level 255 is what I predict will remain unachieved for years to come, since it requires around 3,550 lines to get there. We'll have to wait and see if these milestones are ever achieved, but for now, this is the world record in NES Tetris. Thanks for watching.